If you thought Yanny versus Laurel was mind blowing, you ain't seen, or should I say, you ain't heard nothing yet. Because this auditory illusion that popped up in the wake of Yanny versus Laurel is so much better. Unlike Laurel, most people can actually switch between what they're hearing with this one. In fact, the effect here is so strong, you'll never be able to trust your own senses again. So even if you have heard of this one before, stick around, because to analyze the truth of what's going on in this one, we're gonna be unwrapping a whole slew of other illusions that prove just how lazy and easy to manipulate our brains actually are. First, just listen. Don't go down in the comments yet. What did you just hear? Did you hear this word? Or did you hear this? Now, try switching between them by focusing on one word at a time. If everything's going according to plan, you should be able to switch between them based on which word you have currently in your vision. And now, here's the original video, which, as you watch it, should actually strengthen your perception of Green Needle. But here's the kicker. What's actually being said here is Brainstorm. That's the character's name from the show Ben 10 where this toy originates. But how all this works is gonna blow your mind. Um, blow your ears. Wait, no, no, that just sounds painful. Anyway, hello, Internet. Welcome to Film Theory. The show that's entirely justified in covering this topic today since I sometimes cover the science, psychology, and lore of YouTube videos. So by this point, I'm sure we're all familiar and totally sick of the Yanny lore. Laurel debate, right? Laurel. Last stats I saw, 47% of people were able to hear Yanny and 53% were able to hear Laurel. Let me give you another shot here. Laurel. Honestly, for the life of me, I can only hear Laurel until, of course, you start pitch shifting it. And honestly, that's my big problem with this auditory illusion. Most people are stuck only hearing one of the two, and they have a really hard time hearing the other one without some kind of big change. Whereas most people are able to switch between the brainstorm green needle audio pretty darn easily. In fact, I can I can even control it for you. I don't even have to show the words. How cool is this? But here's the best part. Unlike Yanny Laurel, where the final explanation about what was really going on was quite honestly kind of boring, talking about higher and lower frequencies being overlaid and different sound qualities coming out of different speakers, blah blah blah, yawn. The reasons behind why we experience the brainstorm green needle auditory illusion actually reveal a lot about how our brains function, how lazy they are, and how unreliable our senses can be. So get ready to start distrusting yourself, because here we go. To begin, scientists would classify the brainstorm green needle illusion as an example of what's known as bistable perception, where a stimulus is just too ambiguous for human senses to process with only one interpretation. These are the sorts of illusions that allow you to switch between how you're seeing them. In the case of our Ben 10 friend, it's how you're able to hear on one playthrough and just as well on a second playthrough. But auditory illusions like this are incredibly rare. Most bistable stimuli are visual, like the Schroeder staircase where you can either see the staircase going up and to the left, or you can see an upside down staircase going down and to the right. There's the all-time classic faces versus vases, or you can always go with the internet's favorite, the twirly girly, where as you watch you can actually see her spinning in one direction, then all of a sudden out of the blue, she'll just switch directions. Scientific surveys have shown that most people start seeing her rotating clockwise, a 65-35 split, but I swear, I I swear I never could see her going anything but counterclockwise until actually working on this episode. Then, I just used the arrow keys to have YouTube jump forwards and backwards by five seconds to break the flow of the image briefly. Suddenly, I was able to see it moving in both ways. It is crazy! So, uh, if you're like me and having trouble seeing it rotating in the opposite direction, try that. I'll give you a few seconds to buffer. Well, I deliver you a musical interlude. Pretty Curly! Pretty Curly! Twirly curly, twirly curly, twirly curly. Oh, and uh, by the way, don't believe online articles that say which direction you see her spinning determines your dominant brain hemisphere, or it's an indicator of how smart you are. Science has actually debunked all of that. One of the other interesting wrinkles of Brainstorm Green Needle is that it's a cross-modal problem, which means that it involves multiple different senses, hearing and sight. Yanny versus Laurel is just auditory. You see, our brains are constantly piecing together bits of information from all of our senses to form solid ideas of objects and events in the world around 
around us. Usually these pieces of information complement and confirm each other, thereby improving the reliability of our perception. But when things don't match up in the way that the brain expects, that's when you get some weird results. Here's one of my all-time favorites, the motion bounce illusion. Watch these two balls pass through each other. Nothing super remarkable, right? Now watch it again. Did the balls pass through each other again? Or did they bounce off of each other? Watch them bounce again. It's the exact same thing I showed you the first time, but your brain perceives the balls bouncing off each other because the sound triggers it to think that there was some sort of collision happening. It's using past experience of balls coming together coupled with the sound that it's hearing to inform what you're seeing. And it's telling you that you should be seeing a collision and your perception adjusts accordingly. The same is true for this next illusion. How many times do you see Deadpool's face appear on screen? Twice, right? Let's try it again. Twice again. Now let's slow it way down while keeping the sound in. You see that it only happens once. This phenomenon is called the sound-induced flash illusion, where the sound was influencing what you were seeing happening on screen. So again, we get an example of a cross-modal illusion, where our sense of hearing is affecting our perception of sight. And it's not just limited to those two senses. Both hearing and sight can affect touch too. Take, for instance, the marble hand illusion, which is pretty darn wild. Scientists hit participants' hands with a small hammer while playing a noise. The noise starts off as just the sound of a hammer hitting skin, but it slowly transitions to the sound of a hammer hitting marble. And get this, across the board, the test subjects reported their hand feeling heavier, stiffer, and harder. But if you think that was crazy on its own, get this, the test also showed their skin conductance, or the electrical conductivity of their skin, also went down, just like you would see out of an object made of stone. Crazy! Now, admittedly, it's a bit difficult to smack your hand with a hammer over the internet. So instead, let's try something else. Put on headphones and start rubbing your hands together like this in three, two, one. Felt pretty normal, right? All right, let's try it again in three, two, one. Your hands should have felt moister that time, did they? Now stop rubbing those gross, moist hands of yours and let's try one more time in three, two, one. There, that should have helped dry them off for ya. This phenomenon is called the parchment hand illusion, where sound is directly influencing your sense of touch. You are basically feeling the feelings that the sounds are telling you to feel. Feels pretty good, and wet and moist and sticky, which is just kinda weird. Sure, all this is fun and games, but how do all these cross-modal illusions apply to Brainstorm and Green Needle? Well, look at the original video. Notice how the podium flashes three times. Even though the toy is officially saying Brainstorm, Storm, the word brainstorm is only two syllables, but we're seeing three flashes from the toy, which seems like they should coincide with the syllables that we're hearing. Our brain is looking to hear a three-syllable phrase that'll match up with the cadence of those flashes, and the phrase that best matches is green needle, or other things that are kind of close. But obviously that can't be the whole story here, because as I demonstrated at the top of the episode, you were able to hear both brainstorm and green needle without me ever showing you a video clip. All it took was hearing the audio and seeing the words. And this is perhaps the biggest differentiator with Yanni versus Laurel. Because no amount of me showing you Yanni on screen while playing the audio Laurel. is gonna get you to hear it if you can't already. Well, it turns out that one of the major reasons we hear and are able to switch between the words brainstorm and green needle is because of the psychological process of priming. Where your brain gets preconditioned into one thought pattern and thus tries to fit new stimuli into the pattern moving forward. For instance, let me talk to you about how much I love showers. Now, that might seem a bit weird for me to talk about right now, but sometimes I just can't help it. I love talking about and taking showers. I love getting clean, I love washing my hair, I like singing and thinking in the shower. I love the shower, I love the shower. I also got a confession, I love washing my hands in the sink. I use Old Spice in water, or Dove in water mostly, but sometimes if I'm feeling particularly wild and slippery, I'm not opposed to the occasional Irish spring in water. But enough about my bathing and hygiene habits. If I were to ask you to complete this word that you see on screen right now, what would you say? Most people at this point should say soap. 
thanks to the effect of priming, specifically associative priming. I got you thinking in the pattern of bathrooms and washing, which makes you much more likely to see those letters and think soap rather than things like step, stop, seep, or any of the other words that fit that pattern. Think about associative priming like a web with each word as its own node in that web. I activated all of the words around soap without actually saying soap itself. So when presented with the opportunity to fill in that word, your brain jumped at the chance. But priming can also have some unexpected consequences too. For instance, stereotypes are actually a form of psychological priming. One of the most extreme examples to show this came from a study by Shiv, Patinsky, and Embody, where they took Asian American women and gave them a math test. Sucks to be subjects in that study. Now, the generally believed stereotype for those who have Asian descent is that they're great at math. And conversely, the stereotype for women is that they're worse in math than men. Hey, don't shoot the messenger. I'm not the one who said it. It's society, okay? Take it up with society. You probably already have on Twitter somewhere. Anyway, in the test, one group was primed to focus on their Asian identity, and the other was primed to focus on their female identity. And get this, the group who was primed with the positive stereotype outperformed the control group, while the one who was primed with the negative stereotype performed worse. Now, when it comes to brainstorm versus green needle, when you choose to focus on one of the two words on screen to try and switch what you're hearing, that's direct priming in action. You're using visual stimuli to trigger your brain into thinking along a certain pattern, and what you hear is affected accordingly. Honestly, if I were to say brain needle, and then show you the words brain needle, and then play the clip for ya... <laughs> There's probably a pretty strong likelihood that you just heard brain needle. And that isn't even one of our options. It's priming in its prime. You've been primed in a way that the Yanni Laurel auditory illusion could never do. So in short, I hope today's episode proved two things for you. First, that your senses are actually completely unreliable. We can't count on our brains to tell us anything accurately. I mean, think about it. Every second, your brain is trying to make sense of all your sensory inputs to create a mental map of the world around you. The processing power this takes is immense, estimated to be up to the equivalent of a hundred million MIPS. That's a hundred million million instructions per second if your brain were built like a standard computer. So your brain comes up with all sorts of shortcuts to help you quickly sort and categorize things and patterns. Tactics like priming means that we don't have to consciously look at every item in a room and rack our brains for a definition. We just instantly know that a chair is a chair is a chair, despite all three of those things looking fairly different from each other. And secondly, look on the Upside. The next time one of these controversial mystery videos hits YouTube and the rest of social media hard, you'll know the secrets behind why everyone's losing their collective online shorts, and you'll be able to be the person to set the record straight. Instead of shaming people because they're too old to hear the right word, or going on a rage-fueled bender in the comment section, you'll be able to tackle the next magic video craze armed with the knowledge that all of our brains have a little bit of faulty wiring, and that using just a little bit of science, we can trick them into seeing and hearing and feeling all sorts of crazy inexplicable things. Except, they're totally splicable. We just splicked them. Remember that our brains are doing a lot of work all the time, so they're always looking for ways to be lazier and work more efficiently. Now, you're armed with the knowledge that the illusions we covered today are all examples of what happens when things slip through the cracks. Unfortunately, after watching this episode, you've also realized that you've been primed to click on the subscribe button as soon as I say, but hey! That's just a theory, a film theory, and actually, if we're being 100% honest, it's more likely that you've been primed to just click to another video when I say those words, but hey, a click on the subscribe button would be really nice and really appreciated, and cuts.